everyone hope you all are doing well so this is the third installment of the Matt YA weekly word and we're going to be looking at a word that starts with the letter C which is covenant covenant the word which is translated into covenant in the Old Testament is the word berit and it appears about 280 times while in the New Testament it's the word diatheke and appears at least 32 times so clearly it's a fairly important word the word covenant can be biblically defined as a mutual and binding agreement between two parties. However, it's important to distinguish it from a contract because in a covenant, both parties enter voluntarily. However, it is also important to recognize the seriousness and weight of upholding a commitment in a covenant. Now, we see a number of different covenants in the Bible, but for right now, let's just look at three relational categories. The first one is the covenant established between God and man. In this, we have the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. We can see the core of the Old Covenant and the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20, and the terms and conditions of this uh, covenant in Deuteronomy 28 and 29. Now, all this, we see that God's intention in these covenants are to guide and regulate the relationship between man and God. However, man in his brokenness is unable to fulfill his side of the covenant. So there is need for a new and better covenant as we see in Hebrews 8, 6 to 8. And in Luke 20 to 20, we see in the same way after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So we see that through Christ's work on the cross and the shedding of blood, we are now able to fulfill our part in the new covenant. And we see the crux of that in Hebrews 9.15, which reads, Therefore he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. We see that through Jesus' sacrifice on the cross, we are able to fulfill our part in the new covenant, and hence receive the promised eternal inheritance, which is God's part in the covenant. This is a really unique covenant because we see that one party is unable to fulfill their role in the covenant, so the other party actually uh, provides a way through which they can fulfill their role. Isn't that so beautiful? Because this is the covenant that our sovereign God, through love, has with man. Secondly, we have the covenant between a woman and a man. In Genesis 2.20, it says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one. And that's why in most wedding ceremonies, we see the man and woman make a covenant of love and fidelity till death do each other part. And this is probably the most binding covenant uh, between humans. And finally, we see a covenant between brothers and sisters. We see in 1 Samuel 20.16-17, uh, Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord take vengeance on the enemies of David. And Jonathan made David swear again by his love for him, for he loved him as he loved his own soul. Now, Jonathan was a heir to the throne, and he had a lot to lose. However, he knew that it was all worth it. And he was willing to even like forsake his relationship with his father for David. And this is where small groups come in. It's very important to have covenant relationships with our fellow brothers and sisters who will be able to not only hold us accountable, but also uphold us in our walk and our faith. And as with all commitments, covenants, we are also to lay down ourselves for our brothers and sisters and yeah, walk along with them in their walk and faith. So now we're in a very interesting time with the COVID still uh, at large. So let's hopefully use this time to build these kind of covenant relationships between our brothers and sisters and help hold each other uh, in our walks in faith and also through prayer. God bless.